We start. Okay, so I'm going to call today's meeting of July 8th to order at uh, what time is it? My screen is 7:35. If we could rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay. Hey, let's see if you can do it this time. Here we go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Perfect. Thank you. My pleasure. I love that. And it, like I said, we still need to look into maybe doing some artwork so we can send out little certificates. Um, I know Rini had mentioned that we can do like a contest. So that would be great if we can get something to go with that. Okay. Okay, next is the approval agenda. I don't believe we have anything coming up and I don't think we, we are pretty set for what we have tonight. So we will go to the approval of minutes. So I will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the June 23rd special meeting. <laughs> Christina Ford, I'd like to make a motion to approve the minutes from June 23rd, 2020 special meeting. Jacob Mari, second. Okay, any discussion? Does anyone have any corrections? I don't think that one had anything that was very simple. <laughs> so we will do a roll call vote. Um, all those in favor say aye. Any opposed can say nay or you can abstain. Uh, Jacob. Aye. Karen. Aye. Christine. Aye. Plored. Aye. Rini? Aye. Dana? Aye. Um, I as well, therefore it passes unanimously. Is, I don't see Lisa on here now that I'm looking. She, and I see Dana has her hand up too. <laughs> I don't know if hi. there's. I just um, raised my hand so I could get to the top of the screen. I'll take oh, gotcha, 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 gotcha. I got no boxes way. of everybody. It's all disorganized this time. Um, DuPonts. Hi, I'm um, clerking for Lisa tonight. Okay, perfect. So let me know if there's any questions. <laughs> Lisa's pretty good about letting us know. Um, we do try to make sure that everyone has their names. So thank you for letting me know. That's perfect because I just all of a sudden looked and I said, you know what? I don't see Lisa. <laughs> right. I, um, I did speak to Lisa beforehand and she kind of gave me a rundown. And um, so I'm ready to go. Perfect. Right. So thank you so much. Okay, we will go to public participation and I do not have Tony the timer with me tonight. So uh, I don't know who would like to be the timer, but somebody gets to be the timer. Anybody wants to be the timer? Jacob is going to be the timer. <laughs> and is up. Um, once again, we will, uh, the public, as long as you can state your name and your address, and then we can have um, two minutes and Jacob will let you know when there's 30 seconds left. And we can start with that. And it looks like Tammy's on. And Tammy's in a car. So let's Tammy see is in a car. Where, where we go with this. <laughs> Hi, uh, Tammy Nutio, 71 Weber Road, Tallinn, Connecticut. I notice on your agenda today, you have recognition of um, Coach Aaron Reed. And I'm actually with my daughter also. <laughs> who is driving said car. We're on our way to a soccer game. And um, I want to take a minute to talk a little bit about Aaron. Um, I, I don't know how many of you have children who are involved in sports in this town, but getting a good coach who can really build up a kid and um, teach them that they are worth more than even they think they know they are. Um, Aaron Reed is an amazing, an amazing coach. Um, she's done so much for girls soccer in this town, being on the town soccer club and then taking over and being the coach at the high school. We had seen a, um, a state championship again, which we hadn't seen in town in a long time. And she did it by bringing together a bunch of girls who um, kind of thrown together without a coach, with a new coach, and, um, and then continued on with it. She's amazing. And um, I would just like to congratulate her and to let you guys know that you have a rare gem in Aaron, and I think Cassidy wants to say something quickly too. I mean, I'm driving, so I won't make eye contact. Um, but yeah, I just want to say she's an amazing coach, and I am very grateful and thankful that I had her as a coach for my senior year of high school. And honestly, it wouldn't have been the same without her. She is by far one of the best coaches I've had in my entire life. And she's now playing in college. So, um, Aaron, much congratulations. Uh, whatever recognition the board is giving you, you deserve that and more. 
Thank you very much, Tammy. <laughs> we will get to the recognition and H. So we got a couple more steps, but <laughs> we'll get there. Um, anyone else at this time would like to make any public comments? Okay, doesn't look like it. So we shall move on to correspondence, but Tony is not available at this time. So unless Jacob, did he perhaps give you anything? Because sometimes he does. No, I could just make stuff up, but I don't think you want me to. So, so next meeting, he owes us for the last two weeks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, points of information. Does any board member have any point of information at this time? Oh, this is going great. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we can go to our uh, student representatives, which is Samar and Alexandria Casa. Dr. Willett, we still need to fix the name on here. Yeah, yeah, I, I think the one that was posted was fixed. This must be one of the older ones, but yeah. Okay, as long as we make sure that we get that template done. Yep. I saw that and I was like, oh man, I thought I told you. <laughs> So if they could, Alexandra is ready and Samar. All my blocks are so different today. Hi everyone. So um, we don't have that much, but um, so some of the fall sports uh, have captain's practice starting up again. Uh, juniors and seniors who took AP tests in May have score reports, which should be released, I think on June, uh, July 16th. And then Simmer and I attended the community conversation that Dr. Willett hosted last week, um, discussing the climate and culture in our schools. It was well attended by the community members of Holland, um, and it was focused on preparing students for like uh, a diverse society in the future. And, and um, senior portraits are happening over the summer from July to August. And Alex, as Alexandra said, we attended that discussion on the curriculum that's changing from 2022 to 2023 and basically how next year we can focus more on um, racial inequality in the classroom because the full curriculum isn't till 2022 but we can have like you know some discussion on it and that was basically it perfect thank you ladies thank you I just want to say welcome, Simmer, officially. So this is the Good first one. Faces, ladies. That's what Thank I, you. I was laughing at the thing saying, Fisher, I'm like, he's done. Now we have to have Simmer on here. <laughs> Make it official. Okay. <coughs> so now we can go on to the um, superintendent's report. So Dr. Willett. Right. So, yeah, and, and welcome, Simmer, and welcome back, um, Alexandra. We're very happy to have you. Um, on to uh, H1. The first item here is, and as Tammy had already kicked us off, uh, we're doing a recognition once again for Aaron Reed. Aaron is going to, I guess, you're going to be a regular kind of thing here because <laughs> every year we're doing this. It's, it, it, it's for good reason because she is absolutely amazing. Um, but she's back on the roster here in particular because she has been selected um, by the Connecticut High School Coaches Association as Outstanding Coach of the Year. And she, as you may recall, was also honored last year. Um, these coaches are honored yearly at a dinner at the AquaTurf in Southington. But this year, it was unfortunately COVID canceled. And, um, and in the past, we've actually, you know, been physically in the same place. So we were able to kind of give her a physical, you know, a congratulations all in the um, the uh, town council chambers. But well, we're just going to have to do it virtually this time. But she was hired as a coach uh, in the fall of 2016. Has an has had a series of amazing seasons. Seasons, and as Miss Nuccio said, um, you know she connects with the kids. She's amazing with the families. She's just a huge, huge asset to the community, and has has helped so many. Um, find their confidence and find find themselves in many ways. So it's the second time that she's receiving this prestigious recognition. And the Board of Education is doing a official extension of congratulations to you, Coach Reed. 
uh, for your ongoing accomplishments and, and your ongoing success. So thank you so much for being part of our district. Uh, and I just wanted to make sure that you got recognized for this. Um, uh, uh, athletic uh, Supervisor Zenzek is also here. So I would like to just give him the, the floor for a minute. Uh, Mr. Zenzek, would you like to throw anything out there too? Yeah, no, I just, uh, you, I, I echo everything, what everybody said. She, she is amazing. She's done so much uh, in my short time of there, uh, not only for Talon High School, uh, Talon High School Athletics, soccer and girls soccer for all those. So, um, you know, she, she's, she's an amazing asset to the program. Uh, and we're, we're so, so happy that she's, you know, she's with us and uh, hopefully she's with us for 30, 40 more years, coach. So, uh, you know, keep going. Thank you so much. Thank you for everything you do. Um, you, you make a, you make a tremendous impact with the kids. You make that connection and uh, congratulations and, and, and definitely, definitely well-deserved. I just want to say thank you all for, for recognizing me here. Coaching Holland is amazing. Um, the kids, the parents, the staff at THS, Coach Zemzak, I, I couldn't be in a better place. I couldn't be happier and uh, it couldn't be more fun. I hope it's, Hope it keeps going on for quite a while. I'm with you. I'm with you, Coach Zenda. So thank you all very much. And uh, I, like I said, coaching in Talon has been amazing, and I'm extremely happy to be here. So thank you. Yeah, if we could unmute and just give her a good round of applause, I think that we could at least do that virtually. There you go. Right? Yes, we can. Congratulations, Coach. Miss Nuccio, well said, and your daughter, well said. That was fantastic. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Tammy. Thanks, Cassidy. Thank you very much, Aaron. It really is much appreciated. It's nice to bring people on and show how hard our staff is working. You know, it's great to have these awards and, you know, kind of really does stink that you didn't get to go to the aqua turf, but, you know, <laughs> a round of applause on Zoom. <laughs> there you go. We'll have to do. <laughs> it, it's hopefully not the new norm. <laughs> correct, correct. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, let's go to the budget update. Okay, so H2, the budget update. I'll just do a quick share of the screen um, so people can follow along. <clears throat> so right now for, um, I think you've got, you can see the uh, the blue paper here, hopefully. Just make sure you can. <clears throat> yeah, so you've got, um, here we go. There we go. Yep, yep. So it's preliminary June budget update. Uh, we do get our final budget number typically in the first week of August after everything has been cleared um, and every encumbrance has been cleared and, uh, and the process is generally complete by then. And then as you know, it goes through an audit procedure, um, which is uh, finalized in the third quarter of the, of the next fiscal year. So the purpose of this item is a follow-up on the um, phase documents that I provided to the board over the month of April and into June. Uh, the, it's, the purpose is to give you as close of an idea as I could as of, uh, as of the last time I looked at uh, or was able to get the balance before the document had to be published here for the meeting. So that was June 30th. Um, and today, or as of yesterday, the number is about 742, so it hasn't changed all that much. It's still in the same range, so these numbers will still have a good deal of accuracy for um, this report. So essentially the June 30 or end of year balance is 736,267 uh, using this preliminary figure. And again, it'll be updated by um, our August meeting. Um, the breakdown that we discussed and that the board endorsed had the four recommendations in it. And as you recall, the fifth was uh, that the remaining funds be split in a 30-40-30 split. So if we go with the 30-40-30 split, um, you're looking at a Educational Reserve Fund deposit of 220,880, a COVID pandemic relief fund um, deposit of 294,507, and a roll to the town of about 220,880, which would account for the 30, 40, 30 split. Um, keep, keep in mind that the COVID pandemic emergency fund piece has to be actually endorsed and codified by the town council. So right now that piece, um, is something that has to be legislated, so to speak, on the town side uh, once uh, they get a little farther into the new fiscal year here. But um, the Educational Reserve Fund request uh, has already been made at that 30% level, and the role to the town would be 
you know, as, as stated here, what remains. So, <clears throat> so at this point, I also provided some of the language that had previously been provided in the documents to provide, to give you sort of a refresher as to what each of these requests um, generally entail. Um, ERF can be used for the uh, special education and technology and capital, you know, what the idea behind the COVID account creation was, and a little bit of the details on the rollover. So ultimately, those items comprise H2 here, which is the preliminary June budget update for the board. Okay, does any board member have any questions? I'll put my little thing back up. See, that's what it is. You're so uh, always sharing documents, so I only have so many squares. <laughs> yeah, I know. When I, I lose everybody's picture now when I share the documents, so that was something new. I don't know why that's happening, but I can't see anybody anymore, but that's okay. As long as you can see the documents, we're good. So, <laughs> um, Any questions from the board members? You could raise your little hand or go through it. Okay. Uh, looks like you're good, Dr. Willett. Okay, um, moving on to the next agenda item for tonight. Um, we have item H3, school reopening update. Um, so as of the time of this report, the Tallinn school staff teams have already begun engaging and have, have done so on some level for a couple of weeks now actually, um, go back with the administrators to the retreat and a little before that. Um, so we have essentially 40 staff broken into teams working on various aspects of the state's plan. And uh, as you know, we have the Tallinn reopening advisory committee that had its first meeting on Monday. Um, I believe that was a, a very positive, very successful meeting. I think a lot of people were very engaged in, um, and I think they, uh, you know, they were able to, to glean some information uh, out of the confusion that the state is kind of giving us right now. Uh, we have, you know, and we're able to deliver some, at least some small certainties with respect to uh, what, what the state is expecting. Um, and these, Things that we know can be in our plan for now, um, and the plan will have to adjust a little if the state adjusts it, its approach. So in the track committee, um, I reported out on the work that had been done so far and also reported on the, the state's expectations as they exist right now and what we're doing about that. So we do have to have a plan to the state by July 24th. Um, this is about 15 days, you know, 15 working days after the release of the 50-page document um, that the state provided its, uh, you know, its guidance um, within. So we have about 15 working days to make that happen. Um, it's, I believe, understood by the state that what we would be providing is a document that um, that is a work in progress ultimately because the state also will be changing certain aspects of its approach based on um, what's going on with respect to the pandemic uh, into August. So when those, uh, you know, when and if those kinds of adjustments are made, um, i.e. they could say, instead of all in, we're going to partial day, or they could say, if something got bad enough, we're gonna to go to online learning again. The plan that we will have available will have those thresholds and those levels so that if that does happen, we're, we're simply referring to page, let's say 10 of the plan versus you know, page seven of the plan. So the plan will have adjustments in there, but, um, but I expect that the state may also have certain things that it changes or does that we will have to continuously update this document. So while we will have the initial uh, plan to the state by July 24th, and I will be presenting the uh, draft of it that I have in the July 22nd meeting. Um, I expect that we will be updating that document all the way through August. And uh, most superintendents in most districts, uh, we all have that expectation that we're going to have to be making adjustments and tweaks to it as we go through the time, um, you know, go into that August and uh, September period, because uh, the state the state is going to be doing a lot of um, uh, adjusting as well to things as the conditions change. So um, we will be doing this work in progress uh, throughout likely August, and I'll continue to report out through the track committee and also in conjunction with that to the various subcommittees of the board, as well as the board of education overall um, about our progress, about uh, certain things that are happening within the state um, and so on. So uh, it, the track committee does have a website. Um, I've put it out there in a couple places, but I also put it on this agenda too. Uh, I'd encourage people to go to that track site. 
It has uh, an information page. It has other resources. Um, and uh, as I get the opportunity to in the next few days and weekend, I'll be updating the track site again. A lot of updates will happen over the weekend um, because it's uh, the time when I get to pull all the information from that week together. So, uh, and it's anticipation of the, you know, the following meetings and they're typically at the beginning of the week, um, each week. So um, I would encourage people to go to that and take a look at the resources, especially um, each Monday, because that'll have a lot of updates in it. And, um, you know, from that point on, we'll just, uh, you know, we'll keep giving uh, updates to the community through a variety of means, including the, uh, the virtual coffees that I have. Uh, there's a number of superintendents coffees that are a part of the, um, the next month or two, and anybody can come to those and it's a free flow conversation. People can ask any questions they want. There's no fixed agenda in those virtual coffee meetings. So if they see something at the track committee and they're interested in knowing more, um, I encourage them to come to that virtual coffee and we can have an interactive conversation about it. So the track committee meetings are open to the public. Um, the public cannot participate uh, the, from the standpoint of uh, talking in those meetings because it is a fixed committee of people um, that are representatives of the community, but um, they certainly can come to the virtual coffees and talk and ask anything that they want. Their representatives will be doing a lot of the um, talking and asking within the committee itself. And the, um, the membership on that committee is also posted on the track site. So that's essentially the 360 on this particular item. Um, and any questions, I'm happy to, to answer. You know, I do have a question. I didn't go on to the link yet, uh, but somebody had, and I don't know if these are just rumors, but somebody had asked me if that every town in Connecticut were supposed to start on the same date. And I was like, well, I don't believe so. I think, you know, we have it started on the, what was it, August 27th? And I don't, I don't know, is any of that going to change or? They have talked about making things consistent across the state. And most of those kinds of things have been set aside. Um, and then they've looked at whether they should do that as a region. Right now, I don't, I don't have uh, information suggesting they want every single district, all 169, for instance, to start at the same day. Okay. I just, like I said, someone just so happened to ask, so I just figured I might as well sure. throw it yeah. out there. Make, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, Watch there it. are no no bad <laughs> questions. They're all good questions. Okay, we, uh, Kate, oh, Kate's joining us. Look at, she's here today. Hi guys, hopefully you can hear me. Thanks for calling on me. Um, I would uh, say, first of all, thank you to Dr. Willett. This um, reopening piece is a massive, massive undertaking. Uh, the state issued a 50 page document, which is, um, I think that I emailed it to all of the board of ed members. And if you haven't yet read it, um, I would say take some time to read it because we really need to understand the scope of the work that the, the town is, um, the town schools are expected to do. It's pretty massive. Um, and, and at the very least, let's please take some time to look at the track website that, that Dr. Willett put together. It's, um, it's really imperative for us to understand. I just, I just can't say this enough. Like, in in my professional and my personal life, this is just like super important that we all know, you know, what what all is happening. Um, and and I just wanted to thank again, Dr. Willett. Like, it's it's incredible to me that you're able to manage all of these things, um, building a school, reopening the schools in the midst of a pandemic that has killed five hundred thousand people um, in the world. It's it's pretty amazing so or i'm not sure what the number is actually i'm sorry um it's overwhelming to me on an emotional level so anyway i just want to say thank you and please friends please take some time to read those materials and that's it thank you enjoy your rest of your camping i <laughs> uh, mean um, just uh, a lot of the document that um Ms. Howard Bender referred to, and uh, the short version are also listed on the information page of the track site. So there's a 50 page document, and there's also a template there that is a much shorter document that kind of condenses it for people who want to read kind of a Reader's Digest version, if you will. But um, so, yes, it's a great place to check it out. That track site has a lot. That eight page document is just like perfect, it'll give you a good overview. You don't have to do the 50 unless you're, you know, extra. You want to do extra work. Not sure. yeah. <laughs> okay, let's go to Karen. Yeah, just um, real quick, Dr. Willett, um, sorry I couldn't make the reopening committee meeting. Um, I know it's open to the public. Um, 
I was just curious. I know there's a lot of moving parts to this and will be up until we reopen in some fashion, but um, just in reading some things and kind of what's out there in the education world is there's a lot of concern um, from staff um, and teachers um, around safety, of course, but um, I guess I was just wondering if you could talk a minute about our staff and what's, I guess, what's their feeling out there and contractually, do we have to do work there as well? Um, just, just some things I was thinking about as I read what's out there in the world. Yeah, you know, I, um, I think that um, part of the process is uh, working very closely with the uh, bargaining units, um, all staff. You know, there are uh, many staff on uh, the um, internal committees, obviously, that um, are giving great feedback. Uh, again, we just had another meeting today, have subcommittees working. Um, so staff are going to be and are, frankly, a major contributor to um, the district's overall planning as we move forward. Um, and I'm talking to the TEA, which is the Talent Education um, Association, um, interacting with the CEA on a state level. The AFT and CEA are part of the meetings that um, Car Commissioner Cardona has done and superintendents have been um, in involved in. So there's a lot of cross communication right now. Um, you know, with staff, not only of our district, but of other districts too. And, and as you might imagine, this is something that crosses over all of our borders. You know, the, the people are concerned about generally the, the same thing. So um, and there's, a, there's a, also a meeting of the Eastern Highland Health District tomorrow for superintendents to interpret the state's 50 page document because the health districts have some things to say about the state's document as well. Um, some of the health districts, you know, had some had some uh, thoughts to offer on it. So um, there's a lot of consideration being given to um, to the safety of, well, I mean, it's primary consideration being given to the safety of students and staff. Um, and, um, you know, they, there's um, a lot that we have to be doing to ensure that. So for instance, uh, you know, PPE, everybody will have personal protective equipment and everybody will have to wear it, um, students and staff. And uh, the staff will have um, access to and will have the face shields. Um, you know, we'll be following the state plans and we're going to be creating all of our internal school plans based on the requirements and guidelines of the state. So, um, you know, even with all of that, uh, as you might imagine, you know, people are still concerned. Um, it'd be disingenuous to say that they're not. Uh, you see the states that this is going out of control in and people get afraid. And, you know, the thing about Connecticut is that we are in a very good place with our uh, situation as, at the time being, if nothing changes. So the state of Connecticut has given this thumbs up to opening because the the damage being done to kids socially and emotionally, educationally, um, right now in Connecticut would be greater than the risk of having them all together um, because the statistics are showing that, and Massachusetts published some interesting uh, data on this too, that you know kids, uh, and especially in, in a state like Connecticut with the numbers that are coming out right now, um, students are, are relatively safe as long as we follow, you know, rules and use PPE. Um, and so, under those conditions, because they're, you know, they're safe, um, you know, they they're they're feeling that the bigger risk is the isolation and keeping them out of school. Um, and they're interacting on the streets when they're not in schools, but they're not doing it with the PPE. Um, so there's a lot of data and interesting information to show that having them in school and doing it with PPE is one of the safer things you can do, especially in the state of Connecticut with the numbers they're showing. So that's a very positive thing. Um, we know that, um, that emotionally and mental health issues um, you know, start to get exacerbated when students are not in school. And physically in school. And so, you know, there's so many reasons why Connecticut has made the choice to say we're all in. And because they are, there are so many good reasons to do that and our numbers are so good, um, you know, it makes sense for us to do it in this way and especially to endeavor to start this way. Okay, and is there, um, 
I'm hearing a little bit of um, hubbub about some federal, some push on the federal level for more funding, but I don't. Yeah, we. Um, it would be great if we were if we were going to get uh, additional funding. Um, you know, you have to go what is called through ESA, um, then FEMA, then state. So um, I don't think we can rely on uh, federal funding. I think it will be great if we receive it in Tallinn. I'm not sure that we can plan on it. So I wouldn't build my, you know, build a plan on the assumption that we will get a, a large amount of federal funding into our school district, um, or even at this point, additional state funding. But if we do, uh, uh, certainly it will help the situation. Um, I want to make sure that we're working with a plan that, um, you know, that that can keep going even if we are not able to, you know, get that get a a special amount from the federal government. Okay. No, I didn't. I was not banking on it. I was just wondering if you heard at your level as far as superintendents. Yeah, the last the last meeting I was in was more of a don't count on it. And, um, and I hate to say that, but it was that there are so many levels, you know, e you have to go to ESA first, then FEMA, and then to, um, you know, there's like four different uh, thresholds before you actually get reimbursed. And if any of there was any kind of reimbursement or you were able to acquire funding in any of these other ways, then you don't get this, you know, this final, um, this final, um, you know, uh, allocation. So I I'm just thinking that that we will be uh, very happy if it happens, but that we're not, I don't, wouldn't want to count on it for the schools beyond okay. the beyond the CARES Act, beyond that right. 46. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Uh, any other board members have any questions at this time? Okay. Oh, um, I'm sorry, Ashley, I just- Yep, go uh, ahead. <laughs> sorry. Um, I just wanted to reiterate, so I've been playing with that track site <clears throat> over the last week or so, and it is so very, very informative. Um, I've had a few people um, reach out and say that they were having trouble with the link. Um, Dr. Willett, for questions. Um, oh, okay. So I'm able to do it on my iPad and my computer. Um, just so you know, I didn't know if you were you were getting. Um, but that's really a great way for the public um, to have some of their questions answered is to submit that form um, right there on the tall and um, reopening committee. And I'm sorry, this is Dana Philbin. I, I forgot we have um, a backup for Lisa today. Um, so again, that reopening advisory committee and that track website are just such good resources, not only for us as Board of Education members, um, but our public to get involved because there's so many answers, uh, so many questions that can be had, but also so many answers that are right there to keep us informed because it is ever changing and there's so many ebbs and flows um, with it. And so thank you, Dr. Opening Committee and everybody for being so flexible to do what's best for you know our, our Tallinn students and our Tallinn kids. Um, but I did look at the abridged version um, that Kate had mentioned. And I've been diving into that 50 page document because it is quite a large document. Um, but not only as a board of ed member who needs to, to make, help make decisions for the whole community, I know it's informative me as a parent of a Tallinn public school system child. So I just think it's, it's paramount and it's imperative that we do our homework as a board of ed, um, as the board, and that we have, uh, you know, people come to us about it. Um, let them know about, you know, the advisory committee, let them know about the track website, let them know about the questionnaire, um, let them know about, you know, the virtual copies, because there's, there's, there's so much concern in the unknown, but the more that we help educate ourselves and we help educate the community, I think the better we'll feel about the progress that we're making. Um, and again, everything, everything has been changing with this COVID situation by the day, the minute, the second. Sadly, so I'm very appreciative that it sounds like we have, you know, that we're writing a, you know, a three, three-step type game plan that we can have, you know, all in, half and half, 
or you know online only depending on what's going on so we're not kind of blindsided when school actually does start but again i would just challenge everybody to please take a look at that 50 page or that definitive um i've had um, i feel really comfortable about the progress we're making just because i've been uh you know i've informed myself and educated myself so that's not to say and i just want to make sure that um any folks that have reached out you know this is a great great opportunity for the public to get involved even if you, you know there's a lot of folks that didn't make the committee so this is a great way to be involved and steer the committee as well Thank you, uh, and I'm also just in the shared screen, uh, giving you examples of where you can find some of this information, uh, the full report, and then the shorter template report. So those looking at the, the uh, Zoom links can see you know, the difference. And so this is much shorter as you see um, the reopening short template. Yes, thank you for providing that. It's, it's, been, it's been very eye-opening and very hopeful and educational. No problem. Thank you, Ashley. That's all I have. Okay, perfect. Um, does anybody else have any comments? What a lively bunch tonight. Okay. <laughs> Let's go to H4, the assistant principal opening. Okay, jumping back around here. Your, your screen's going to get all jumbled up again in a second. Um, let's try to get it. Do, do, do. There we go. Okay, back to the agenda. So assistant principal opening. Um, so as you know, we have some really good news that the principal position was filled by Tom Poland. Um, and as uh, a result, we are now starting the process of um, looking for the assistant principal. Uh, we did do an internal posting for that period. Uh, there was a request to extend that post, so we did. Um, and at this point now, uh, as we move forward, um, there are a couple of choices to make, um, and I'll be in communication with the board on that as we as we go into the process. Typically, an advisory committee um, is created with parent guardian staff, curriculum staff, and other administrators. The Tallinn interview protocol is utilized, um, which I shared with the board. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. And typically, there's about four interview steps, um, including a rated performance task, and the final candidates that make it to the fourth stage are brought to the Board of Education for their consideration as an appointment of a new administrator within the district. So just to give you where that comes from, in general terms, the Board of Education Policy 4010 specifies for administrators that the Board of Education shall make appointments in accordance to the procedure set forth in 10151, et cetera. So you can read that. Um, I won't read the whole thing to you, but the point is that um, when we reach that point, the superintendent provides you um, some of the options that have risen to the top and um, you know, and the Board of Education then considers in one of the board meetings that'll be coming up um, who to make the uh, who to make the appointee, you know. So we should be getting that wrapped up in a period of, uh, you know, three to, to six weeks, depending on the situation. The base salary for fiscal year 21 for this position is 126,253. You do get $1,000 for, um, each year of experience up to nine years. And there's a thousand dollar credit for um, being a high school administrator that's typically applied. So um, that's generally the price range for the, for the job. And um, I do expect that um, it'll be a very exciting uh, time as we get, uh, get our new person in. So just wanted to make sure the board had a good sense of what was going on with that. Okay, perfect. Um, does any board member have any questions? Let me bring this up over here. Dana, is your hand still raised from before? Sorry. Okay, <laughs> let's go to Jacob. Okay, um, so I missed it, but uh, do you know, Dr. Willett, like about how long the process typically takes before we get to see candidates? I'm hoping like sometime before the fall would be nice. I'm just kind of curious. That's definitely the goal, yes. yes. Okay. So it's usually, it's, as I said, said about three to, to six weeks, roughly, depending on the okay. situation. Okay. And the only other question I had is, um, you know, reading through the agenda, there's the advisory committee. I was just curious how um, some of those members, particularly like the parents and guardians and the students are um, determined for that. So when, when we're about to put it together, we'll put out a notification for people who are interested 
Um, if we get far more than we can accommodate, we will use a randomizer to randomly select um, people within that group. So if, uh, if 100 people came forward saying they wanted to be part of it, um, we would you know, say we were gonna include see three parent guardians or five parent guardians, we'd use a randomizer to pick three or five. Okay, all right, thank you. I'm, that's all my questions. Sure. Okay, perfect. Um, let's. I thought Florida's hand. Right, Florida, do you, do you still have a question, or are you want? Go? Jacob asked it, so I'm good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> perfect. I thought I was seeing things. I'm like, it was up, but now it's gone. Okay, perfect. Um, by chance, Dr. Willa, is there any like I don't know if I can ask though. Um, any like in town that have applied? Can I ask? That? Uh, internal candidates. Uh, yeah. Yes. So we we are in the process of. And there was an extension to this. So um, that's always the first part of it. Okay. Perfect. Okay. If there's no other further questions, we will go to H5. Okay. So H5 basically is just a quick follow-up um, on the Board of Ed announcement H4 from the June 24, 2020 meeting. Um, just giving you a, a little um, reminder of the narrative. So, um, you know, in the previous meeting, uh, I'm, I let you know that we were gonna be doing that conversation um, on the 24th, uh, talked about it a little bit. The 29th is when the program occurred. Um, I did notice uh, that we had a, a very good, um, you know, very good um, uh, number of people come out for that, which was really fantastic. Uh, I noticed some board members also were uh, in there, and I thought that was really nice too. So the the purpose of um, the meeting is uh, to put forward in a series, and we have done um, these community learning workshops in the past. Um, I did, as I had mentioned in a uh, another um, one of our meetings. Um, I had worked with the University of Connecticut and um, done some community learning workshops with them, uh, worked with True Colors and did some community workshops with them uh, in, in partnership. So this is uh, not, not an isolated one, but um, it was definitely a time and a timely, um, timely uh, a workshop to do. And so we, you know, we did a uh, community and courageous conversation workshop that included some uh, former graduates of Tolland um, that also were kind enough to come and be a part of that. Um, we, you know, had uh, a, a panel that uh, many of you were able to see and meet. Uh, Representative uh, Pat Wilson Phineas, uh, she's one of, uh, you know, one of the guests and one of our panelists. So she's a black member of the. A state of Connecticut legislature and a representative, um, and she's done a lot of work in this area too. Dr. Gerald Harrison, uh, who is uh, from the Capital Region Education Council, um, and so centering these two individuals, they're both, um, you know, black individuals. It was a, a great conversation, and we were able to do a lot of, um, you know, a lot of focusing on how to help make education as equitable as possible. Dr. Watson was also involved, Central Connecticut State University. Um, and uh, Elizabeth Griffin, who is uh, from the State Education Resource Center. So these panelists, as well as the students uh, and graduates made the program just amazing. And uh, a lot of great, great um, conversations were had. Uh, I do plan on continuing it uh, as we've had them in the past, we'll continue to have them in the future. Um, and I, I think that um, as many of you know, um, I've talked about, uh, it dovetailing with our portrait of a graduate work. And so uh, individuals that have expressed interest in working um, in a portrait on the portrait of a graduate from the community will also be looped in. Um, and these will dovetail with, with that conversation and with those committee meetings as we start looking at and continue to look at, you know, what we wanna make sure our graduates have um, when they leave the Tallinn school system and go out into the world for skills um, and capabilities and knowledge. So um, it was also mentioned in the meeting that the state of Connecticut has um, endorsed a uh, US history that is a African-American and Latino US history uh, class that, um, that districts now will be um, providing in their school systems. And uh, this will be 
lightly tied into the work that's done, um, you know, curriculum wise, and it will be a part of say the you know, POG work. Um, so there's a lot of great things that we're gonna be tying together here and that, uh, that work together and are collective th um, collectively beneficial to the district or symbiotically beneficial to the district. And uh, we've also been reviewing all of the uh, literature in the district to make sure that, um, you know, with CREC and CERC and other organizations, um, to make sure that our literature is equitable and um, responsive and that it's, um, you know, that it's giving an opportunity for um, children of all backgrounds to, um, to have the literature resonate with them um, and to, you know, to have them feel represented. So, so it was, it was a really good um, conversation that was, um, that happened that night and um, it is tying into the ones in the past and it'll be tying into the ones in the future and part of our portrait of graduate work. So it's very exciting. And I just wanted to loop it back around and give the Board of Ed a, a report on how it went. Um, my first question to you is, do we have, um, I know you're trying to set up a link to view because I was not able to attend it. I know other people want to just kind of review the, the meeting itself. I didn't know if you were able to get that up. Yes, so the, you're talking about the, the video, right? Yeah. Yes, so it is there. Um, it's probably, let me just do a quick screen share real quick. Oops, I have to stop this screen share first. Sorry. Um, turn on my light so I can see again. <laughs> there we go. Now that I can see. Um, okay, so let me share this real quick. So it's it is part of the website. There's a lot of great resources on the website if you can, um, if you're able to take a look. Uh, share screen. Here we go. So there's the Tolland website. If people go to district superintendent, superintendent Willits page and scroll down um, the community workshops, you'll notice that we've reset them for the new year. So we put this one as the first one um, and there's a series of TB TBDs. If you click on, uh, click here for the video of the event, it will show um, the entire event. I think the first eight minutes where I was pulling people in are cut, you know, cut out because the eight minutes were just getting everybody in, but it starts at, um, you know, at the point where uh, people are contributing. So you should be able to find it, uh, find it there. And if the, anyone has any questions or, or any um, needs any help with that, I can definitely uh, help you out. Perfect. Thank you, Dr. Willa. I know you were having a hard time trying to get that up and loaded. So thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, and let's go to our members. Uh, Jacob, is your hand new up or is it old up? Okay, so that's an old up. Uh, Karen. Yes, thanks. Um, um, thank you, Dr. Willett for putting that together. Um, I was able to participate and I really appreciated the panel that was put together. Um, they were all really great and um, informative and thank you to the students. I, know, I think Alexandra and both uh, Simmer were there, uh, students and graduates that um, I think appreciated the opportunity to come to the table and ask their questions. And um, I know the panel was very impressed with them as well. So um, just thank you very much. I really appreciated it. Let's go to Dina next. Okay. Hi, Dina Falbin. Um, uh, I just wanted to thank Dr. Willett, me and the team for, for putting on uh, the event or the, the, that session. Um, it was definitely eye-opening. Um, I'm gonna kind of uh, piggyback on what Karen said. You stole a little of my thunder. Um, I was really proud of our young students and our graduates that spoke um, so eloquently and so beautifully and passionately, but matter of factly. Um, they talked a lot about equitable versus being equal, um, what the difference in, of that is. Um, 
it made me proud to be a Tom public school parent. It made me proud to be a part of the Tom public schools board of education. Uh, as I said, we some... have, sorry, sorry. That, no, oh, that, that was some kind of video. <laughs> so, oh. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. That's what no, happens when you okay. share audio from these things. <laughs> Go ahead. I, I apologize. No, please, please don't. I'm lucky. I don't have a dog barking in the background and kids yelling. So, um, but, you know, I just really proud of the way the students spoke and just very intelligent and passionate about making an impact in our community and passionate about, you know, the, the footprint that they're going to make, whether it be in the Tallinn community or in the world where, you know, they are going. Um, the, the guest speakers were brilliant and um, informative. Um, and Dr. Harrison, you know, he was so impressed with our graduates and young adults but he asked them to continue on the conversation post the end of the Zoom. Um, and, you know, just watching their faces um, when, our, when our young students and our graduates spoke, um, they were blown away. And that just says something right about what our Tallinn public school system is doing. Um, but if anybody didn't get a chance to attend, I, you know, I think it's a great opportunity, especially in the times we have right now, um, that we're going through, this is just a great opportunity to inform ourselves and educate ourselves and um, be a bigger part of the community um, to make that impact, but equitable, 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 I think is just a huge term and a huge area of focus that we need to make sure that we're, that we're, that we're focusing on, you know, in our work every, every day and every, every couple of weeks when we have our board meeting. Um, but I do look forward to additional community workshops. I appreciate your bravery and your boldness to have this, those types of meetings and workshops, Dr. Willa, because it can challenge what we are doing in the Tublin public school system. It only challenges us to do better and to strive for more. Although we are doing a great job with diversity and equi you know, equitable education and education on that and having diversity of um, classes in, in our school system. Um, but we can always improve and in and, and setting up a, a meeting such as that um, can be challenging to hear it, but that's the only way we're going to continue to progress and improve. So I thank you very much for putting that on. Uh, I'm very appreciative as a community member for that meeting and all the guests. And again, um, without send, kind of sending Alexandra and Simmer, you're brilliant and you're amazing young ladies. And uh, I'm very excited to see more of what the two of you are going to be doing in your footprint. Thank you. Perfect. Um, let's go to Kate. Hello. Um, so I actually like to echo a few things that Dana said. Um, I, I would like to commend, first of all, the district and Dr. Willette for having the bravery to hold a conversation that is clearly overdue based on what the students were saying. Um, it's unfortunate that more of us weren't able to attend. It was really quite enlightening. The um, the students were advocating for, and, and former students, I must say, were advocating for some more culturally um, um, aware conversations and also like really opening up the expanse of, of curriculum. So. I mean, as as a parent, um, I was I was really proud of of our kids and their their concepts of of um, racial injustice and and what we can do within the schools to foster a more um, a more diverse community. Um, so you know, it would be really easy for Tom to just rest on its laurels and say, "Oh, we're just ninety four percent white. We don't have that problem here." But I think that it was really brave and very necessary for us to say, hey, it's not good enough. And for Dr. Willette to, to have been in the, in the forefront of these conversations is really quite exceptional. Um, I think that we need to remember that as we continue um, on, in, our, in our work as well. So um, kudos, and I'm so proud of you all, you are graduates and soon to be graduates. And um, I'm, I'm really, really uh, impressed with your, your expansive knowledge and thank you very much. That's it. Yep. And if I just may throw a two cents in there real quick, and I apologize for jumping in, I just want to um, give kudos to the to the students. Um, you know, the 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 term bravery belongs with those those young adults and those graduates. You know, um, for me, it's it's my professional and moral responsibility to to make sure that we're doing workshops and making sure that 
information is getting out there. I want to make sure that I that we that I center um, those students who you know had the bravery to to be a part of that. It's not easy to come out in any Zoom meeting or public meeting and and share your thoughts and feelings. Um, and so I just I give that term to them. Um, although I deeply appreciate it for me, for me it's you know it's the the young adults and the people that came out to speak um, about it. The, they deserve all the kudos for it. It's 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 them that deserves the credit. So thank you. I appreciate it. Okay, let's go to Christina Bard. Hi guys, thank you, Walt, for uh, posting the link to watch it. I'm I apologize that I couldn't make it that night. Um, <laughs> So I am eager to see it. Uh, I am curious, the, the panelists, are you going to have the same panelists or are you going to rotate panelists through the different workshops you do? Probably be rotating. Not all of the um, panels will always be available at every at each of the times we'll do it. So um, we'll, we'll, we'll be rotating. Um, when we did do a workshop um, with some University of Connecticut staff, um, that was a panel situation as well. In fact, and I think some parents who I see maybe even in this meeting here were a part of that one at that time. So we, when we do these, we'll do panels um, and they won't always be the same people, no. Okay, and then I had, um, I guess question or just um, maybe just a point of information. The new curriculum, the U.S. history curriculum. Uh, I'd love to see that in the curriculum committee. I think that's you know something that the curriculum committee could do in terms of what's new going on in the schools, and I, I'd love to see what um, what is being brought to the table there. Uh, and then my other question was um, in regards to the literature review to make sure it was equitable and responsive. Um, I guess I don't mean to sound concerned, but I, I, if we're considering getting rid of literature, uh, I feel like that's something that I'd like to talk about. Um, there's no current plan to like get rid of literature like a book burning or something. It's more, okay, right, <laughs> it's more like uh, making sure that if um, we're going to have assignments that that when we give those assignments, that there is a you know a series of pieces of literature that a student can choose from that resonate with them, but that we also make sure that the, all voices are heard throughout the curriculum as well. So, um, no, it's not like a, a throwing all kinds of books on a fire type of thing at all. It's more just making sure that what we have been lacking, we make sure we have. So okay. that there is perspective that our children aren't getting that they will be getting, you know, in the future as as we do things to to you know to open up the the world to um, and 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 do a better job, frankly, and and that's all on me of making sure that we we have um, literature that prepares our our young adults for the world they're entering. Um, so, you know, there are some really great opportunities here that the state uh, the state that U.S. Uh, African American and Latino U.S. history class is coming from the state as an initiative. And so, yes, we definitely will be talking about it in the curriculum committee um, awesome. as, it, as it evolves. And it, we do have, I think we've talked about it before too, when we talked about grad requirements, that um, it's in the next two years, three years, that that has to become a reality. Very so good, and thank you. Not to interrupt, but Dr. Willett, could you, I believe that curriculum is being, is currently being written, is it not at the state level? The state is uh, preparing their guidelines for it. Yes, and I, you know, we'll, we'll and I'm, in, I'm excited to see what they come up with. Um, ultimately, when it lands in the districts, you know, then we incorporate it, and it'll definitely, in that timeline, uh, be something we're talking a lot about. Right. Publicly. So before it actually gets to the curriculum committee, we have to get it in Tallinn from the guidelines from the state. That's correct. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it's like a two or three year kind of thing as it comes in. But actually, if I could just pop in with a couple more clarifications on that, um, the, the one of sure that um, Jacob had a turn to because I wanted to get up to all the members first too, and then we okay. Can... I didn't see his hand up. Okay, sorry. No problem. Um, Jacob, go ahead. Okay, yeah. Uh, just real quick, I, I would agree with Christina that I would like to see that. I'm glad that we probably will see that um, history curriculum. I'd also like to take a look. Um, and curriculum committee or as a board a little bit about any changes we might make to um, 
sort of language arts programs, like uh, how you were talking about Dr. Willa providing more of a selection of works. Um, uh, I remember my personal experience reading lots of books um, related to, you know, the, the struggles of women and minorities. Um, and I'm just kind of curious to see what sort of changes might be made. And I'd like to when those changes. Um, so that that's, that's all I have to say about that. Okay, uh, let's go back to Kate. Thank you. Um, so just with regard to the, the state curriculum, it is being written, as Dr. Vallette said, and one of the panelists that was on the, the, um, the call, the Voices from Our Schools, was a woman um, whose last name is LeBron Griffin, and she's right. actually on the committee that is currently writing that curriculum. So again, it's going to be a while, but I do want us to say and to, to recognize that the voices from our school, the students that were there, um, articulated very clearly that they would like to have at least some opportunities to be discussing those, not just the curriculum that's coming from the state, but also these these topics. Um, and they don't want to wait, which I which I heard loud and clear when I attended that meeting. Um, and another thing that a literature review is simply that it's it's an opportunity for us to look at the list of of of, um, of books that our kids read within the the time that they're in Collins schools, and it's an opportunity for us to to expand that canon of work so that it is more inclusive of all voices. Um, and again, that is something that kids are interested in, and that is something that is you know within the the realm of our. Um, our responsibility to make sure that our kids are as capable as possible as they they get into the world. So I just wanted to clarify those couple of things. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Kate. Okay. Um, Alexandria. I just want to say thank you to Dr. Willett for hosting that. And then uh, I want to reiterate what Mrs. Howard Bender said that I know me and a bunch of my peers that are seniors and even the grade below us, we want to see this change happening now. We don't want to have to wait. So I think that that was just something that really shown, like was clear from that meeting. That's all, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm assuming Dana, your, your hand is an old hand. I've been assuming this. Dana, is your hand an old hand? It doesn't say my hand's up. Okay, it's an oh, old hand, just sorry. I don't know, I just up. lowered it, okay. I didn't see it. I'm just making sure I get everybody. <laughs> no, I appreciate you asking though, thank you. Just to make sure. So Dr. Willett, I think we've gone through all the questions so we can move on to the H6, which is the policy um, 1030. And obviously you're gonna have to steal Tony's thunder because I know he likes to present these things <laughs> and go through them, but he is not here. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So this one's pretty straightforward. Um, what we're looking to do with policy 1030 is essentially um, create an index policy for non-discrimination policies. So um, SNG or Shipman and Goodwin recommends having an index policy. This policy would basically be a um, you know, in the in the earlier or front part of the book because it's a lower number. And as people uh, approached it, and it's a part of section, um, it's a part of our policy sections that people might encounter first as they're looking through them, it then refers people to the various other um, non-discrimination policies that we have district-wide. So if you take a look at it in its language, um, it's got the basic language and legal language of non-discrimination for the state of Connecticut. And then as you go further into it, it also then shows you where the administrative regulations are. It refers you to policy 4060, policy 5070, policy 5171, um, also refers to the Office of Civil Rights and OCR. So basically it's a one, uh, one or two page document that gives an overview of non-discrimination and then refers people to the, um, the additional policies that exist uh, for um, a deeper dive into any one of them that they're more interested in, um, you know, researching or if they were seeking information on. So uh, it's just a recommendation that we have these index policies. So this index policy was created and uh, put in front of you for your consideration. There is one thing to note. Um, as I was going through this, I noticed that uh, more recently, they've uh, started including 504 policies for 
uh, personnel. So I'm going to be adding a 504 policy for personnel. And so where you see the red, um, we will be adding a number for a personnel 504 policy. Um, there is some general statements in policy 4030, but um, I, I don't think that's enough. So we would be adding a special 504 ADA policy for, um, for the personnel members, which is part of, you know, I think what we need to be doing and it's part of Shipwin's recommendation. So that is the one thing you'll see different when this comes for a second reading, instead of the red, um, red text you see there, it'll instead include, you know, the reference to the adult 504 policy that will be the next thing that put, gets put in front of you. So when you see a second reading here, it'll be followed by that policy that's uh, currently in development. Okay. Do any of the board members have any questions at this time? If you do, just raise your hand. Jacob. Okay, uh, so just to clarify, so this is an index policy. So just it's um, basically consolidates all the other policies that we already have on the books. It's not creating anything new per se. No, basically it's it's giving a person in in one place um, all or as you know almost all of the um, things that they might be looking for if they were thinking, hey, I need to know what Tallinn's non-discrimination um, documentation is. So even if you go to say for instance third page, it also lets you know you know personnel to go to if uh, you, know, you have questions about human resources and things like that as they relate to uh, discrimination or non-discrimination. So it's, it's basically a comprehensive page that gives them both the state information, the local information, um, and all of the local policies in our documentation that relate to non-discrimination. Okay, it seems like a good idea. That's, that's it. Sure. <laughs> Any other questions at this time? Nope. And when you have um, that 504, will we have that? Uh, it's not gonna just, you know, I'm just trying to understand that too. Like you're just adding that in and what that will say is exactly, do we not have a 504 or is it coming directly from the state? Yeah, the 504 policy for students we have. Um, 504 for personnel used to be wrapped into another policy called 4030, but it really needs its own. Okay. So, um, you know, and it really wasn't, you know, uh, comprehensive enough. And so as time has gone on, the recommendation has been uh, to us to make a more extensive one. And I don't mean to us like only Tolland. I mean, Shiplin and Goodwin's guidance is to expand that to make sure you have a 504 personnel policy. So we're gonna be um, expanding that aspect of it. And that's why when you see a second reading of this, hopefully what will be in there is a reference to that policy number. And then the next thing you'll see after that is the first read of that policy. Okay, so we're gonna have this all together and then we're gonna go ahead and review the 504 policy itself. Right, that'll be coming. I was next. just making sure. Yeah. In the ducks in a row. <laughs> That's right. And, and basically the chronology here as, is as I was doing this, I noticed that we needed more in the 504 area. So that's why, um, you know, this is done or going to be kind of in front of you first while that one gets updated. Because as I, as I noticed, as I was working on this one, I realized we got to update that one too. Okay, perfect. Um, any other questions? Nope. Okay. Um, let me get my thing out about. Let's move on to um, committee and liaison reports. Um, I believe Birch Grove had something last night. Um, I think it was last night. Maybe it wasn't. My week has definitely been crazy. So Dana, do you have anything for Birch Grove or not? I actually do have an arsenal of information for Birch Grove. Perfect. See, so, I'm not crazy. All right. Give me one second, because normally you don't go to me first. All right. Oh, okay. Well, no, I will come back I to you. It. I have okay. it. I'm glad. Um, so we got a very thorough update um, with the construction update last night. Stop it, buddy. Please go. 
Thank you. Um, very thorough uh, construction update last night. Um, we also decided um, that we're going to have a, we were usually just getting a, a construction update on the first week of the month meeting, uh, but now we're just gonna get a brief one as things are really kind of progressing. He's gonna do a brief uh, construction update each meeting. Um, the framing started, they're running all the underground conduit for the electrical, so that should be done shortly. Um, they're installed steel. Um, the big news is we are on schedule. We are on schedule, so that's huge. Um, there are no unsuitable, additional unsuitable soils reported to date, um, so we're good there as of right now. Um, they are, we are organizing a topping off ceremony for some time in August. Again, we're kind of um, at the, we're kind of waiting for Demaria to let us know when we can do it. We're gonna probably do it near the portables site um, where it's not near construction and such. Um, but as soon as they give us a date, I mean, last night he said it could be end August, middle August, and then the beginning of August. So it's kind of all uh, depending on where, where we are in the schedule, but they'll be working with Dr. Willett and Mr. Swanson and Ms. Guglietta to ensure that we get information out to the Tallinn Public School families uh, and Birch Grove School parents and new incoming parents so that people can be involved in a topping off ceremony. Um, so anybody who can attend that, uh, we'll be sending out that information. Um, they are working on setting up a virtual tour. So there'll be renderings of the key interior features. Um, the presentation will be on July 21st at the Birch Grove Building Committee meeting. And Dr. Willow will post the video from the Zoom recording of that portion online for the community to view at any time. So it'll give everybody kind of a real view and visual of what's going on in the interior of the school versus just seeing blueprints because those who aren't in the construction field are used to looking at blueprints. It's hard to kind of grasp what the school is gonna look like. Um, and uh, Damani is also committed to providing us um, not only with the blueprints, but more photos and aerials um, of the progress uh, along with the blueprints will be provided at our future meetings that'll be available for the public to see those as well. So a lot of exciting stuff at the Bridge Road Committee um, and some really good information last night. And that's Just to clarify, to uh, topping off has, is steel, it's about steel. So don't come with your cups. It's all about steel. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, no, I was, I was, you know, I was a little, I, when I first heard topping off, I was thinking, excellent, you know, I'll be there with my mug, but this is more about, it's steel, it's the last steel um, rod. It's, it's, it's pretty exciting. I don't know if anybody's driven by the site. I mean, it's just amazing um, what they've accomplished in a short amount of time, even with some uphill battles that we had to make with the unsuitable soils and such. So um again we are on time that's exciting and the ceremony sounds like it'll be a really cool thing and the virtual tour is going to be pretty cool for the community that's awesome yeah um thank you for the clarification dr Walla. <laughs> <laughs> i'm just having a little fun with that <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah. any questions guys or are you good with that okay um curriculum committee we had that right in between here, Kate. Sorry, just had to get unmuted, sorry about that. Um, yes, we met, it was a good meeting. Um, we got pretty deep talking about um, like how curriculum is written. We got, we got talking a little bit about the reopening. Um, it, it was a really good meeting, um, you know. Uh, we got, we've got our, we still are planning to have the um, supervisors come in and talk with us. Um, and I spoke to you about that already, Ashley. So I think, I think we're in a good place. Um, talked about UBD a little bit, uh, but we've got some more kind of thinking and working to do, but good stuff. Good stuff. It was a great, it was a great meeting. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, do we have town council? I, don't, I can't remember what day it is, honestly. <laughs> uh, Karen, was there any um, communications meetings? No communications. Um, we're just um, going to continue following up with the PTO and probably scheduling another um, 
connection meeting with them. Um, I don't have anything from town council. Perfect. Um, just going through my head. I don't think there was anybody else that met. Please correct me if I am wrong at this time. If you have a liaison report. Okay, we are good. Uh, I do not have a chairperson's report. I worked up until five minutes before this meeting. So um, that did not happen. <laughs> we do not have anything for board action either. Um, we can go to public participation, which would be um, comments limited to the items on this agenda. And we will have Jacob be the timer and he will give you 30 seconds um, notification. And when you speak, if you could list your name and your address and we can go from there. So if you could just raise your little hand if you have a comment, there we go. Um, Jaden. Jaden registered 68 Old Stafford Road. Um, I would just like to say how unpleased I am uh, with a whole lot of people. And it just, it doesn't have to do with just the Board of Ed. It's got to do with the town council as well. Um, I hear one thing. I hear that help, help wants to be made. I hear that people want to make, you know, a change. People want to uh, do this, do that to help uh, people like me and people like Aziz and people I'm, I'm, I'm talking to every day to, to try to make younger kids lives better that look like us and yet when 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 i don't see that same support for for from from leaders in town uh at workshops that have more attendance than board of ed meetings i'm a little discouraged and i'm sorry if i'm coming off a little angry but i've waited a, a decent while to say this and i i i i i, I i'm i'm my my question my question to, to everyone that was not at that workshop is why? Why were you not at that workshop? The, 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 the workshop that Dr. Willett uh, hosted with, with uh, four amazing panel panelists that answered questions. There were student past and current students at that workshop, you know, giving testimony to, to what needs to change and, and, and everything. And yet I, I saw, I saw it, I, two people uh, from, from uh, may, and maybe, you know what, maybe, you know, I didn't check uh, enough. I scrolled through every, thank you. I, I, I scrolled through every, you know, 10 minutes to see. So I think I'm pretty accurate, but I don't understand why, why there's talk about, you know, let's, 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 let's help, let's help, uh, uh, let's help the, uh, uh, the minority in this town. Let's, let's help those, those, those races and, 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 yet there's no there's no appearance at these these workshops and so uh, those these workshops are super vital and so i those kinds of things if you really want to make a difference and if you really want to help i need you to i need you to attend more than just a board of ed meeting and i need you to uh, to put some effort into helping my life and 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 students lives that are being affected by this stuff and frankly i i i'm really upset that it had to come to this because I, I was expecting more members to be at that that workshop, but I, 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 I'm very I'll, to keep it short to final, to conclude this. I'll say I'm very disappointed. I'm very 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 disappointed, and everyone in the town should be very disappointed. Okay, thank you very much, Jaden. Uh, let's go to Stephen Jones. Hi, Stephen Jones, uh, 514 Old Stafford Road. Sorry, I meant to say this at the beginning of the meeting, but I'm one of the uh, council liaisons for the month of July and August. So I know Chairman Nuccio is usually a mainstay for the meetings, but you'll see my uh, icon and possibly my face for the next couple of months as uh, the rotational liaison. So have a great meeting and you know keep up the great work. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Uh, let's go to Liz Costa. Hi, everyone. Uh, first of all, thank you. Um, Dr. Willett, thank you again for your courage in doing that meeting. Um, it, and I've attended several of those in the past, whether 13th or what have you. And I've heard you say over the last five to six years how much uh, climate and culture impacts our students. Um, importantly, even after they graduate and that we're always not always, excuse me, that our students aren't always prepared um, socially to go out into a world that is uh, more diverse than our school system and our town. So I wanted to say thank you for that. And I wanted to say thank you to the students that like Jaden that had graduated and then also the two students on the Board of Ed, Simmer and Alexandra. Um, they, all the questions were amazing. 
and poignant. And I would encourage you, you know, I, I won't get angry, but I would encourage you all to go back and listen to that and watch it. Um, it was really poignant. And I will, I'll just finish up by saying that legislation, as far as the, uh, the mandates for the education portion doesn't go into effect until 2022, 23. That means, excuse me, 21, 22. That means that students will be missed out. The student, our current seniors and juniors potentially will be missing out on that. Um, I would encourage all of you to encourage Dr. Willett and the, each of the schools to have community conversations in the schools about these things. All our students can benefit, not just those that are racially diverse. Um, all our students could benefit from the learnings. You have 30 um, seconds. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Um, all our students could learn um, from this significantly. Thank you. Okay, perfect, thank you, Liz. Anyone else at this time? would like to um, have two minutes to have a comment. If not, we will move on to the points of information. Okay, at this point, we can open it up to points of information. And I would like to say, Jaden, personally, I did not go on the time that it was. Like I said, right now is all my deadlines for my work, especially with international stuff. And I did ask Dr. Willett, and he couldn't even tell you that to make sure that we had it um, recorded so we can view it because at this point I have to just try to fit it in where I can because I need to work in order to have bills to pay. So <laughs> kind of what I'm gonna choose, you know, like I don't I have to have a job. So um, that's what happened with me. But um, we can go on to Kate. Sorry, unmuting. Um, I would just like to ask again um, to see if you guys would be willing to put on our agenda changing the name of uh, Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. I would again ask that you all read the resources that I put together for you and emailed to you a while ago. I'm just putting that out there again because it still matters. That's it. And I'd just like to say that, you know, we are definitely reviewing and researching with the consideration of adding it to the agenda, but we do have to do our due diligence on that. And I do have Dr. Willett um, checking a couple of bases on for a couple of those things. So it's not that it's out of the mind right now. It's just, I got to make sure that everything is I's dotted and T's crossed. Thank you. No problem. Um, Jacob. I mean, okay. Um, so to answer uh, Mr. Regisford's question, I was not in attendance because I was out of town um, in a place without internet access, visiting family members that I rarely get to see. Um, I'd just like to say as a general word of caution, um, although I understand that this is a very intense issue, you know, that obviously has emotions up for very good reasons, might I add that um, people are going about their daily lives um, nonetheless, and that um, I wouldn't necessarily uh, say that an absence at a particular meeting is a sign of some sort of malevolent intentions to any group. Um, and that I think that we are starting to take some steps towards um, doing things that this, uh, these focus groups have pointed um, at. Um, I think that Dr. Willa talked a bit about you know, again, trying to implement this class for African American history. And then even this policy that we're considering tonight of consolidating all these different non discrimination policies and um, providing resources for people who uh, may have been wronged to, um, you know, de to defend their rights. So I wrong, wrong. Okay. I don't really think it's appropriate to interrupt a board member when they're talking, but um, that's all I have to say. I, sorry, I wasn't talking about that. Sorry. Okay, um, let's go to Dana. Sorry, I was waving a beetle. <laughs> well, I didn't know if your lights were going yeah, off. No, like, I had my up too, but I was going like this, like a crazy person. So my apologies. Um, first of all, um, Jaden and Liz, I just would like to acknowledge your statements. Um, I definitely think that that workshop. Um, was eye-opening and influential um, and um, educational. Um, the, the folks on the panel, um, their resumes spoke louder than, than 
I mean, their words spoke louder than their resumes, but they were um, brilliant minds. And the only way that we can continue, continue and to improve is to continue to listen to brilliant minds, such as those folks on that panel, and such as the, the brilliant young students and young adults that spoke. Um, I appreciate your passion, um, Jade and Registered. Uh, I, I, I can't say that I, that I can empathize, um, but I can sympathize. Um, and I definitely understand where you're coming from. You want um, your board of ed members and your town council members to, to speak, listen, and support all of our constituents. As a general word of caution, as a board of ed member, it is not our responsibility to correct our constituents. It's our responsibility to listen, to learn, to research, and advise. So I'd like to say that. Um, although you may not agree, Mr. Mari, of Jaden's comments, it is our job to listen to it and do our due diligence and do our research and support our constituents, whether we agree with them or not, because we are the faces of all 17,000 residents in this town. Um, again, I will reiterate um, that our students spoke eloquently. Um, and I know that we all have busy lives. I don't disagree. Ashley, I hear you. Um, I'm working full-time raising a family as well. Um, I definitely, you know, there's some meetings I can make and there's some meetings I can't. Um, so I understand that. And I, I hope that, our, that the constituents and the people of the community understand that, that we are people just trying to survive as well. Um, but if you can make it to a meeting, these ones would be the ones that I would strongly urge and if you if you can't, then I would definitely take a take a peek at that video and sit there and really listen to it because I will tell you that the way that our students spoke, the way that those doctors spoke, the way that Dr. Willett spoke, and the way the people of our community members spoke um, brought chills to me. I mean, it hairs raised on my arms just because of the the way they spoke so eloquently and um, poignantly. Um, but I took a lot from it and I learned a lot. Um, because we are in our community of talent, but it's our job as a board of education and town council and um, representatives, our entire community is to prepare our young adults for what's outside of town. And what's outside of town is not what we see every day. Um, we need to educate our folks on what's across the entire United States, what's across the world, where we've been, where we've come from, and correct opportunities of where we've where we've been or, you know, through hundreds of years. And this is just a starting point of, of amazing, brilliant conversation. Again, it's our, we are supposed to provide our students and young adults with tools to succeed and fill tools within their work box, in their, in their toolbox, so that when they go out in the world that they can be successful, respectful, young, educated adults. Um, so, Again, I would just challenge anybody who wasn't able to come and understandably so that you weren't able to go um, to, to watch that video because it was the doctors that were on there were, were phenomenal, phenomenal. And um, thank you, Liz Costa, and thank you, Jaden uh, Registered, for speaking your mind. I, I, I appreciate um, your bravery to speak about something so passionately. And I, I hope to continue to see more impact. Jaden, you spoke brilliantly at the meeting as well. Um, what I can say to you is keep making an impact on, on your own with, with the people you surround yourself and, and the committees and, and keep being involved because the only way we're going to continue to pro to make a progress is by having you and Simmer and Alexandra Costa and the young adults of, of the graduating classes of, before you getting involved and making an impact. So you have my support. I'm sure you have a lot of folks support around you, but keep doing what you're doing because you're doing the right thing. And that's all I have. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Dana. Um, let's go to Christina Plord. Um, I also uh, wanted to address uh, Jaden's statement. I, I can completely understand your disappointment uh, when you're talking about uh, something that's so important to you and so, something that's really come to the forefront right now. And um, I am sorry that I was not on. Um, I was doing family things, but um, I did want to share with you, I did share with you my cell phone number, um, some of the things uh, that I've done to educate myself more um, in this time. 
um, my company um, has opened up the African American Forum um, to all Lilly employees. So I um, joined. Uh, I also participated in a day of solidarity uh, with people at my company. Uh, it was open to everybody. And uh, they came up with a statement um, that I really appreciated and I, it really resonated. Uh, and I thought I'd just read it. Um, I stand in solidarity, solidarity against injustice and in support of humanity. Um, and I think that um, it just, it really had an effect on me. Um, some of the people I heard speak had an effect on me. And I'm sure when I watch uh, the community workshop, it will have an effect on me. And um, I, I think we should con continue the conversation, uh, you and I outside the boardroom, because I think we can find some common ground there. Okay, thank you, Christina. Um, let's go to um, Simmer. Basically what I wanted to say is I totally agree with what Jaden said, and I feel as though more needs to be done in this district to battle racial inequality. And I feel like the best way of doing that is having discussions with other people, especially minority people, because this is not just an African-American problem. This is everyone's problem. And we need to stop acting like this is just, you know, problems of minority people. And by being part of panels, we get to understand where they're coming from instead of just keeping this within ourselves. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anybody else at this time would like to have um, anything? If not, I will move on to future. I think we have everybody. So Dr. Willett, if you wanna just briefly go through our future here. Yes, I'm, I'm excited to, to continue the work that we just talked about. Um, also, school rounds, we did talk about um, the instructional rounds. Uh, they're a great opportunity for board members um, and others to talk to staff and get a sense of our programs and the various things that we'll be doing. Uh, we did do TIS this year. We also did TMS. And it was a little bit strange of a pandemic year, as you know, but my hope is as we move into next year, I'll be able to set up a series of those as, um, as I had hoped to do. So we're rolling with that. Mental health services, we have a lot to talk about as we get into the, you know, the, um, the uh, beginning of the year next year with the pandemic, uh, school bus safety, that is something that you wanted. To, um, of course, that's been put on hold a little bit. Portrait of graduate work continues, as you know, uh, as, as do the Lighthouse programs, and we'll be doing more goal setting with the board next week. And, um, and understanding by design is also uh, one of the things that the supervisors will be talking about when they come to present in front of the board and the curriculum committee. Um, regionalization is an ongoing effort. And uh, as I had already said, goal setting, we're continuing that work uh, next week, as you know. Okay, perfect. Um, we do not have any new business. Therefore, I will um, entertain a motion for adjournment. Jacob Mari, I move that we adjourn uh, the July 8th Board of Education meeting at 9.07 p.m. Christina Plord, second. Any discussion at this time? Oh, no discussion. Imagine that. Karen, um, all those in favor say aye. Any opposed say nay or any, um, you can abstain. Karen? Aye. Jacob? Aye. Rini? Aye. Dana? Aye. Christina? Aye. And that would be aye. Is Kate still on here? Her block no, she got booted off from the campground. There's no service. Okay. Aye. Ash, I'm an aye. <laughs> oh, I, there, I'm sorry, Griffin. See, I knew I missing people, <laughs> perfect. Um, I obviously vote aye, therefore unanimously vote. Um, we will conclude at 9.08 on June, July 8th, perfect. Thank you guys for everything. Thank Have you all. Good night.